So I just got me a brand new back plate and wing. I've got the plate on now, I've got the harness on now. But just how difficult is it really to thread a harness to a back plate? Let's find out together. What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Make sure you click this little subscribe button over here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys will be notified every time we upload new content. Now in today's video, what I'm gonna do is actually break it down on how easy it is to thread a new harness to a brand new backplate and wing system. Now in the previous video, I did kind of a quick time lapse for you just to show you how it's done, but I'm actually gonna break it down piece by piece and show you how I do it. At the end of this video, once I've got everything put together, I'm gonna show you how I adjust it to make sure everything is fitted properly. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, guys, so we're on the second video here. In the first video, y'all saw a quick time lapse of this. Um, what I'm going to do in this video is actually break it down and show you piece by piece how I personally assemble my back plate and wings. I've got every piece of equipment here that I need to do it. Now, some of this is pretty redundant. You'll notice that I've got multiple sets of shears here. There's a reason that I've got those. Um, this particular set here is pretty much done for. Uh, I've had these for a couple of years now. They have eventually rusted out and they've warped and uh, they're pretty much unusable. So I'm actually still gonna be using this sheath here, but I'm not gonna be using these shears. What I'm actually gonna be doing is swapping them out for these shears here. So these will go in here, but at the same time, I'm not gonna be ditching this sheath because this sheath is actually gonna hold a line cutter. And if you've never seen um, technical divers and cave divers, a lot of times they'll take just an old steak knife and they'll grind it down a little bit shorter and that becomes their line cutter. That's exactly what I plan on doing with this knife here and I need a sheath for it. The reason I'm actually doing this is because this particular one has a belt loop that I can actually thread a harness through to where this one doesn't. This one's designed to go around a um, shoulder strap or something like that or around your inflator hose so i'm actually going to be using that for the for that as well and since i do like two types of cutting tools you guys know that i'm a huge fan of the shear so this will actually be on my uh, low pressure inflator hose or low pressure inflator uh, corrugated hose and then this will be on the uh, left side of my harness as well so or the waist strap of the harness so that will be the two cutting tools here this will actually be a replacement for a new red devil uh, back plate and wing that i purchased for myself as well and then of course these right here they're they're getting trashed so I know somebody's going to ask, well, why do you like the shears over, say, a line cutter and things like that? Line cutters are great. They're very quick. They're very, very sharp, and they're very safe to use. Um, I find myself in the line of work that I do both for public safety diving and for salvage work, there's a lot of things I need shears for that a line cutter simply won't do. So I've chose instead of a line cutter to actually use the homemade line cutter from a steak knife because I, I find that they're just as quick. Um, and I can also use, since this is a serrated blade of some sort, I can use it for larger ropes to where a line cutter wouldn't work. And then of course I can still use the shears. Another thing that I like about the shears, one, they're very, very inexpensive. They're not too bad to purchase. You can buy four or five of them. Um, and to be honest, in public safety diving, when I pull these guys out for public safety purposes, uh, they get left anyways. I don't try to resheathe them. They're, they're cheap enough that I can buy a bunch. Uh, I am currently still a firefighter and EMT for my local fire department. So with that being said, I get a handful of these every year from the chief. So it's not a big deal for me to lose these. Uh, even if I purchase one, they're, they're relatively inexpensive. Uh, and for what I make doing salvage work, they're, they're definitely a, a dime a dozen. So that being said, we've got everything laid out in front of us. What we're going to do right now is get rid of everything that we do not need just to get the harness on the plate and to get it sized for me. And we're going to try to do this in real time for you guys as well, just so that you can see it doesn't take that long to do. So right now I don't need the bladder. This is a um, cushion pad that goes on the back plate. I don't temporarily need it as well because it doesn't really add that much extra girth so that it would matter. I'm going to get rid of the cam straps. I don't really need the cam straps just for this part. With that being said, I also don't need the uh, trim weight pouches so we're going to get rid of those. 
as well. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of most of the cutting tools with the exception of this one because I will be using this one. And I'm going to show you first just by threading it on, but understand this part will come off. This is from XS Scuba, this particular sheath, and they send this little clip system. I will be breaking that off here um, after the fact, but once once I've got it on just for the video purpose here, then, then I'll go back and break that off. So I will be keeping that because I will be threading it on. Uh, these I do not need right now. This one's actually going on a different backplate and wing. This will be the, the blues will be what I put on this one. So we'll get rid of those. Um, pretty much everything else that I've got right here, um, I don't need these. These are for the soft pad, but pretty much everything else that I've got here is what we will be needing for uh, this particular build. Now, I do want to state something really quickly. Everything that you see here is practically brand new with the exception of one of the set of the shears. Uh, the um, trim pouches are not new and even my webbing itself is not new. And you'll notice there's a lot of kinks and bends and breaks in it. Uh, the reason is, is this actually come off a soft uh, plate, back plate and wing that I typically travel with. I've decided to upgrade it because I also teach out of that one to the uh, pro version of the RS XR Red Devil system. And with that being said, that's an aluminum plate. I'm going to be traveling with it because it's lightweight. This is going to be a backup to my public safety rig and just an all around uh, good diving back plate and wing to use. So with that being said, I'm going to use the harness from the soft plate itself. Now, I do prefer a single piece webbing harness. I know a lot of guys that are larger than me, they prefer a deluxe style harness because uh, it allows them to adjust on the fly. I'm not gonna be putting any adjustments on this simply because I do want the system to be adjusted to me. And I am gonna go ahead and set it up for a particular type of suit that I'll be wearing when I primarily uh, dive this system. So I don't really need that adjustment there. But if you want adjustment, go with the two piece deluxe style harness. You can get the quick releases if you need it. Uh, me personally, I don't ever find that they are a failure point. I've, I've done so much extreme diving in my career and I've never had that type of piece of gear fail on me. So with that being said, I'm perfectly okay diving it the way um, or diving that deluxe system. Although I still prefer a single piece. So with that being said, I'm gonna take my back plate. I'm just gonna simply flip it upside down and I'm gonna line up the grommet holes with the grommet hole of the single piece webbing harness. And it's pretty easy to do. You just simply line it up like so. Now you will notice this one has printing on one side, but not on the other. It really doesn't matter how you do this. I prefer the shoulder straps to actually show the printing. So I'm gonna make sure I get it started to where um, it will be set up to start to show that printing. So with that being said, I'm gonna start with a printing upside down just like this and I'm gonna get it lined up just like that. Now the next step is, is I'm gonna take one of these flathead bolt screws here and there's a male and female end. It does not matter how you do it but I'm gonna start with a female end from the back side. I'm gonna flip it over and then I will start with the male end and I'll just simply lock it into place. The other uh, three sets there, that is actually for the bladder system to lock it into place to the wing. I do not need them temporarily. All I need is just to get that to locked into place so that the harness itself does not slip while we are threading this on. The next thing I wanna do is actually thread through the slotted part of the plate, and we're gonna do this on both sides. And like I said, this build's actually gonna be relatively easy for me because I've already used this harness on a different uh, back plate and wing. So with that being said, everything's gonna already be pre-lined up where it needs to be, okay? So it's very simple like that. And then I'm going to come up through this top slot as well. And you'll notice that as I do that, it actually orients the printing on the webbing harness for me. So as I come up through here, it looks like it's going to be bare, but as I flip it over to make the actual shoulder strap, you will notice that the printing is directly in line with where I need it to be. So I'm just going to repeat the process on this side as well. So I'll go through the slanted slot first. Just like that. And then I'll come up through the top slot. Okay. And just like that, we have successfully started the harness on the back plate. Okay. 
Very simple, easy procedure. Now at this point, I wanna make sure that I keep it oriented properly because one side's gonna have my inflator hose, the other side is just gonna be bare. So if I was wearing this, I know the left side is gonna have my inflator hose. I definitely want something to lock that inflator hose into the shoulder strap because I definitely don't like mine flopping around, especially when I, if I'm putting it on, I don't wanna have to search for it. So I'm actually gonna use one of these elastic bands. I know a lot of guys use Ranger bands. There's absolutely nothing wrong with using that. Uh, the Mario's XR systems comes with these elastic bands, so I'm just going to use them. Uh, plus, it's what I already had on the harness itself. So, I'm going to thread those guys on. Just like that. And I'm just going to do one on top here. That's actually going to be to hold the inflator hose up at the coupling itself. And then I'll actually have another bungee system that goes on the D-ring and tri-glide to actually hold just above the inflator. On this particular side, I'll actually put the elastic down below it. And what that allows me to do is to secure flashlights, accessories, and things like that. So continuing on this side, I'm actually going to thread on one of the tri-glides and bent D-rings. Now, there's several different tri-glides here. We have a tooth tri-glide and we have a smooth tri-glide. I'm gonna save the tooth ones. I'm not actually gonna be using them except for on the back of the harness and I'll talk a little bit about why I do that. But I'm gonna go ahead and start with one of the smooth tri-glides. Okay, so I'm gonna get it about halfway threaded on like that. And I'm actually gonna take one of the bent D-rings and I'm also going to thread on my little piece of bungee here, okay? And I'm gonna show you once we get everything done what this little piece of bungee is for. So I'm gonna go ahead and get it threaded on as well. Okay. And I'm gonna get everything lined up. And like I said, this build's gonna be relatively simple for me simply because I already had this webbing threaded up on a different back plate, so everything's gonna be perfectly in line for me. And then I'm gonna come over the top of the D-ring and down through the bottom of the tri-glide. That's gonna lock everything into place. Just like that. Very simple, real easy. Nothing too difficult. I'm going to continue on and I'm just going to work both sides down uh, just one by one. And this just really helps me keep everything in line. It's going to keep um, all my D-rings in the proper position. And we will adjust this once I get uh, everything put together. I will put it on and adjust it. But doing it together, keeping the shoulder straps exactly where they need to be, it makes it a lot simpler if you do them both at the same time. So we're going to get the other bent D-ring placed. Once you've done this a couple times, you can thread a back plate in probably about five minutes, I would say would be a good time. Some people might take a little bit longer uh, depending on what additional items you may put on, uh, such as extra bungees and things like that. But you'll notice if I give it a little tug, one needs to go up a little bit higher. So I'm going to slide this one up to keep everything lined up. There we go, give it a little tug. Everything looks nice and lined up there. Okay, pull it down just a little bit, just line it up, and I believe we are there. So the top part here is done. Now I am going to actually add an extra uh, piece of this elastic band here. This is going to be for my accessory items such as flashlights, anything that I want to secure uh, under my arm or clip off to and then secure it under here. Primarily I do that with a flashlight, so that's what I'm going to do there. Now this next part um, it does take a little bit of trial and error to get your shoulder straps just right. You can obviously hang it over your shoulder and have somebody mark it if you want to. Like I said, I'm, I'm a little ahead of the ball game here because these are al already marked for me um, because it did come off a, a separate back plate, but it's going to make it a little bit easier to line it up. Now to make sure you thread it properly because you do want it to be comfortable, I want to think about how this should go on. So I want this nice little neat curve in the webbing itself. So if I'm thinking about the curve and the, the structure of my body, I can kind of see that I need to thread with the um, lettering, if you will, or the markings upwards, just like this. And that way, everything should be nice, neat, and lined up. So I'm gonna go through this back slot first, just like that. And I'm gonna get it lined up just right, okay? Now, here is where these 
tooth triglides are going to come in. I know a lot of people like to add them up top so their D-rings don't shift. I don't have enough heavy objects hanging off these D-rings for it to shift up or down. Um, and some guys will like to use it on their hips for their hip D-ring, especially if they're running stage bottles or if they're clipping off ponies or whatever. Uh, that way it prevents it from sliding. They can lock everything into position. I don't really have that issue neither. I've never really had trouble with stage bottles shifting one way or the other uh, with the smooth triglides. But where I have had issues, especially on a plate that's got slightly larger uh, slots here, I have had issues with the webbing sliding back and forth in it just like this when I put a heavier load on, meaning when I put a tank on, I'm trying to pick the system up. So I'm going to use these tooth triglides to actually lock in the webbing on the back side of the plate right there. Now, I do want to talk real quick about chafing. If you look closely, you'll see that the webbing here is chafed quite a bit. Uh, this harness is probably two years old or something, uh, and it's chafed quite a bit. That's from me not having on the previous system one of these triglides and it's shifting in that system. You can put sleeves on it if you want to, um, but even with the chafing that's on it, I've never really had an issue of it cutting all the way through, so I'm going to kind of neglect to do that at this point, but I am going to be securing it with this extra triglide, and I'm going to be using the tooth triglide to make sure everything holds steady in the position that it needs to. So I'm going to go ahead and flip it over. Get everything lined up exactly where I need it, just like so. And this is going to lock it into position here. So I'm going to go back through the triglide. Okay, just like that. And then we'll go back through the plate. Just like that. Everything should be nice and neat. And now with that extra triglide, doesn't matter how much force I put on it, it's going to lock that harness system in. So now we're going to continue on to the other side. We're just going to repeat the process. I'm going to start with the uh, marking side going up. I'll go through the back slot first. Just like that. We're going to go to our tooth triglide. We'll thread it on. And then we will thread back up through the back side here. Make sure we get lined up with our previous marks on the webbing. Just like that, we're going to flip the harness back over. And here where we can actually do a quick little test just to make sure everything's going to be nice and neat and even. Uh, my D-rings appear to be pretty even as well, so they are lined up just perfect. That means my shoulder straps, if anything, they just barely need a little bit of adjustment on it. But in a nutshell, we are pretty much done at this point with the shoulder area. Now we can either move on to the, um, the waist strap itself or we can go on into the crotch strap. I'm going to save the crotch strap for the last part. So we're going to continue on. Now here on the right side, this will be the male end. This will be the end that is... Um, that is bare. Basically, it's going to thread through the buckle itself. And I've already, like I said, since this was used, I've already got the marks positioned where I need them for the triglide and the D-rings. So I'm just going to pick up another smooth triglide and another D-ring. Now, the top D-rings, those were slanted D-rings, if you will, or pre-bent D-rings. These are just plain old D-rings. Oh, hear my dog barking in the background. So we got just a standard D-ring here. We are going to go ahead and thread it on, get it positioned where we need it. Okay, just like that. And we will adjust these uh, as needed once we get it on, make sure everything fits. Now I'm going to go over to the other side. I'm going to go ahead and thread on another D-ring here.
Okay, and we'll go ahead and get it lined up where it needs to be. Just following the previous marks on it. And that's pretty much got the hip D-rings where they need to be. Now I need to add the buckle. Now there's several different ways to actually add the buckle on. Um, I'm going to show you how I prefer to do it, and, and I'll show you a secondary method as well. But you'll notice that this open slot here is actually, or this first slot is a lot wider than the internal slots. And what that allows you to do is depending on how you start your webbing, you can actually pull it back through the other side to kind of get up any of the excess or anything like that. So I'm actually going to start going on top just like that. I'm going to pull it through, get it into position where it needs to be. I'm going to come back up through the center slot. Okay. Just like that. Okay. So that's essentially got it locked in, but I do want to get rid of the excess here without just cutting it off. So what I'm going to do is actually go through the third and final slot. And all that does is just kind of hide the excess there. Now, unfortunately, I can't leave it here and I don't want to leave it here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to bend it backwards and I'm going to use that slot that I initially went through that was a, a lot wider. Now, what I can do here is actually thread back through and it's going to keep it nice, neat and tight on it just like this. Now there's several things that you can do here. Normally I would actually thread on another tri-glide. So I'd actually have a tri-glide threaded on here that this extra piece would kind of wrap up into and just kind of lock into place. And that does a couple of things for me. One, if I thread on a, a knife or something, it keeps that knife from coming too far forward. So it, it allows it to shift but it keeps it from coming too far forward. Another great option is actually to thread on another piece of elastic, which is what I'm actually going to do here as well. I'm going to thread on elastic because not only will that hold this piece down, it will actually take up any excess and kind of hold it nice and neat up underneath that elastic as well. So we're going to unthread this real quick. And we're going to go ahead and add on the knife and the elastic band. So we're going to start with the nice sheath. I'm just going to take it off. And like I said, I will be cutting this uh, plastic clip off um, just as soon as I get it on here. I'm just showing you guys just real quickly how it's done. So we're going to thread up through the belt loop. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and slide it all the way back just to get it out of my way. I'm going to go ahead and take the piece of elastic, thread it on as well. Okay, now what I can do is come back here to the buckle and once again, I'm going to start in the first slot, but I'm going to start by going through the upper side. Okay, like so. Get it into position. I'll come up through the middle, or the middle slot there. And then of course, I will go through the last slot. That is actually what locks it into position, doesn't allow it to move. And then I'm going to fold the buckle itself down just like that. And come back through the back. And then like I said, if you had a, a spare tri-glide that you could thread on, you could definitely thread it on previous and it would actually hold that in position. Temporarily, all I'm going to do is put it up underneath this elastic band. And that does several things. One, that holds that into place, plus it gives me an extra loop to thread any bit of extra webbing on. And I'll demonstrate that for you real quick. Go through the buckle, get it to wherever I need it. And then what I like to do is just kind of fold it up. Now, obviously you would want to cut any excess off that you don't need. Uh, when you first get a harness, they are going to stretch quite a bit. My suggestion is don't cut it until maybe your first five to ten dives. Give it plenty of time to get stretched out. What I'm going to do here is simply just fold it over temporarily and then thread it back up. So if this was my waist belt and I was wearing it, that's pretty much what you would see around my waist right there just like that right there. So there's nothing uh, creating an entanglement. There's nothing really getting in the way. And it's still fairly easy to, to disconnect if I need to. I just simply pull it out of the elastic, pop it, and then of course it can come off very easily. So in a nutshell, that, that part right there is pretty well done. Now I'm gonna move on to the crotch strap area real quick. 
And I want to think about positioning of the crotch strap. Uh, obviously, you can adjust them once you've got them uh, on your back itself. But what I do want is the back side of the plate and the ring of the crotch strap actually need to be uh, facing the same direction, if you will, because as I pull it up in front, that'll get that D-ring up front. But I'm also going to need another tri-glide and another D-ring as well. And I'll show you what that's actually for. I'm going to go ahead and thread on uh, this D-ring here. So I'm going to pull it down to this position. This is actually the butt D-ring here. Uh, typically in a side mount configuration, this is where I would keep my SMB, things like that. To be honest with you, in a standard backplate and wing setup, I never use uh, my butt D-ring at all. I, I don't think I've ever used it in my entire career. I do use it a lot in side mount, but for back mount diving, I, I never ever use this. But I put it on there, it is there just in case I need it. And now what I'm going to do is actually thread on. So I'm going to start by going through the back side of the plate, pull it forward, okay? And I want to pull it to the point where this D-ring here is about a hand's width. Now, I know we all got different size hands, but about a hand's width, if you will, from the bottom of the plate, just like that. So to do that, I can either pull it through, but I still want to make sure I got plenty of excess, or I can slide the D-ring itself up. For temporarily purposes, I'm just going to go ahead and pull it through to about, about right there. Okay, so you'll see that the D-ring is about a hand's width from the bottom of the back plate. Now, to get rid of this excess here, because I've got quite a bit here that I can cut off, what I'm going to do temporarily is back feed the um, crotch strap excess here up through the triglide and then back down through the triglide around that D-ring and that's going to give a good little nice neat place to secure the excess webbing and then of course at this point by doing it this way having it all through I can actually shift it very very easily all together so I can pull one side up, pull the other side down, and in a nutshell, there is my crotch strap. Now, if I need to slide it down or take more excess from it, I can as well, which we will adjust it once I get it on. All right. Now, another option that you can do here, if you still have uh, an excessive amount here, you can actually add on another piece of elastic banding, if you will. Uh, it's pretty easy because of the way these stretch to add them on after the fact. If you were using some type of ranger band, obviously you would want to thread it on beforehand uh, just because the, the rubber itself doesn't stretch as much, much as the elastic does. And I'm just going to slide that up just like that. That's going to hold that piece together. It's kind of like a little tie tack, if you will. As you can see, my crotch strap is attached. I got it a hand width of way. I've got a butt D-ring. I've got a crotch D-ring. And of course, all that's left is actually putting it on and making sure it fits. So guys, as you can see, it's not that difficult to thread a back plate and wing. Yeah, it takes a little bit of time your first time doing it, but once you've done it two or three times, then it actually becomes very simple. Let me show you really quick how I set it up once everything's adjusted to make sure that I can get to D-rings and everything's adjusted properly. We're going to first start with the height of the back plate. Now, whether you're diving singles or doubles, it's very nice to have it high enough so that if you do have to lean back or reach back, you can either grab your manifold, your isolator, or you can reach back in a single tank system and actually feather the valve if you need to. So to make sure that your plate is at the right height, what I'm gonna do is stand up straight, I'm gonna lean my head back, and I'm gonna reach back with the fingertips and grab the top of the plate. Now I can do this with either hand because I've got it at the right height. Working on down to the shoulder straps, we're going to work on proper adjustment here. Now, me personally, I like to be able to take one of my hands, create a fist, and push it up underneath the strap without it being too tight. Now, I've got a little bit of extra play here because all I'm wearing is a t-shirt. Typically speaking, with a 3 mil or even a 5 mil, I want that little bit of extra play there for that. Moving on to the D-rings, there's two tests that you can do to make sure they're at the proper height, their proper position. Standing up in the straight up position, you can either do a curl with your thumbs, making sure that your thumbs hit those D-rings, or you can do the cross method. Me personally, I like to take my arms out like this, and without even looking, I should be able to come in and clip off to a D-ring if I need to. Now, I like on the right side to clip off a flashlight, and it makes it very handy having it in the position I need it so that I can clip off without actually having to look down at it. 
Moving on down, the waist D-rings are usually personal preference as well. I kind of like them at the seam of my shirt, so if I find the hem or the seam of the shirt comes straight down, that's where these D-rings are going to be. Makes it very easy as well if I'm clipping off, say, my gauges or a stage bottle, or if I'm just clipping off accessories, maybe an SMB or a reel or something like that. Makes it very useful having them exactly where I need them so that I don't actually have to look down and, and find out where they're at. Moving over to the crotch strap itself, I don't want it too tight. Obviously, Obviously for guys you'll understand why but I do want it at the right height so that I can get to this scooter ring I sometimes will use this as an accessory ring as well so with that being said I need to make sure it's at the right height going on or continuing on with that if you'll notice I'm creating a V here with this harness I don't want this harness way up here flat like that it's not very comfortable that way I do want to create a V so I want to make sure that that crotch strap is at the right height to actually pull down on that waist strap to help me create that V as far as as the buckle goes a lot of guys like to put it in the middle I know when I dive side mount I do want the buckle in the middle but on a back mount system I try to get that buckle as far over on my right side as possible I can usually use it just say a hand width from the d-ring and that usually makes it in the right place for me as well and then of course I've got all my accessories added to it that I needed to I've got my shears here which I can reach with either hand and then of course I've got my uh, line cutter here or my steak knife if you will which I can reach with either hand as well but guys that's it I really hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's one of our longer videos, but I hope that you found it helpful. If you've got any questions on how to thread a backplate and wing or how to set one up, please drop me a comment down below and I'll try to answer it the best I can. But guys, if you like this video, smash that thumbs up for me and definitely share it as well. Guys, as always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter, like us on Facebook, pin us on Pinterest, subscribe to us here on YouTube. And guys, don't forget, this coming Saturday at 6.30 p.m., we will be going live with a Q&A with my wife. I told you about it in previous videos we're actually going to be sitting down and talking to a non-diver who is married to a diver and you can guys you can ask us anything please keep it clean but definitely don't forget about that that's this coming saturday at 6 30 p.m but guys as always we appreciate your business